Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. With this video, we are starting a new series on Spring Security. And in this video, we will explore the architecture of Spring Security on a high level. We will take a deep dive into the concepts like security filter chain, authentication manager, authentication provider, security context, and so on. And we will try to understand how everything fits together and how Spring Security secures the Spring Boot based applications. Since this is a no code video, so we will focus on understanding the fundamental flow and architecture first. Then, in the upcoming videos, we will cover the demos and hands on. So, let's get started. Before going into the details of Spring Security, we need to understand the concepts of filter first. What does a filter do in a web application? Now, filters are very important for pre-processing and post-processing of requests and responses in a web application. In a web application, we can have a series of filters. So that means there are more than one filters. The role of any filter is to basically intercept the incoming request, then do something, do some operation, and then pass the request down the chain. That means to another filter in the chain. And when all the filters have been executed successfully, the request reaches to the controller. The controller processes the request and generates a response. And then this response follows the reverse path. That means it goes back to the client through all these filters. So here in this diagram, we have a series of filters. We have filter 1, filter 2 and filter n. So there could be n filters in any web application. Now the inbound flow means the request is coming to the application, which will be intercepted by all these filters. And the outbound flow means the response is traveling back to the client. Now, when the request comes, filter 1 will intercept the request first and it will get a chance to do something about it. So, suppose filter 1 is simply doing the logging. Maybe it is logging some attributes of every incoming request. So, once it completes the execution, what it will do, it will pass the request to another filter in the chain, which is filter 2 in this case. Now, each filter may have a decision to make not all filters will do something about a request. So it's possible that a filter would have a logic that do something only if the condition is true. So for example, in this case, filter 2 can have a condition that if a particular header is present in the request, then only do something. Otherwise, skip the request, skip the processing. So suppose in this case, it has that decision logic in filter 2. And suppose this request does not have that header. So what filter 2 will do, it will do nothing because the header is not present in the request. It will simply pass the request to another filter which is filter 3. Now filter 3 could be responsible for let's say authentication. Alright. So that is the job of filters. They intercept the request, then decide if they have to do something. Then they pass the request down the chain to another filter. And in the end, let's say if all the filters completed the execution successfully, we will have the controller which will handle the request and generate the response. Now, when the response goes back to the client, it follows the reverse path. So that means for request, the order was filter 1, filter 2, filter 3, filter n and controller. But for the response, the order will be filter n, filter 3, filter 2, filter 1. All right, just the reverse. And similarly, Filters can intercept the responses as well and we can enrich something in the responses. So for example, we could have a filter that will set the response header or we could have another filter that can manipulate let's say the status code depending on some condition. So that is the job of filters in a web application. All right, let's move on and try to understand Spring Security now. Now that we understand the concept and role of filters, it will be easier for us to understand how Spring Security works. In a web application, for example, Spring Boot based REST API, when we configure the Spring Security, let's say by adding the required dependencies, what Spring Security does, it adds a new filter in the filter chain. So any web application that we develop using Spring Boot or Spring, for example, it has a set of filters. Although we don't configure the filters explicitly in most of the cases, but because this is a web application, there are some filters which are configured by the Spring framework. And in the same way, when we configure Spring Security, Spring Security adds a new filter in the filter chain. So there is this filter which will be added by the Spring Security. That also means that when a request comes to the application, it will be handled by this filter. Because as we understand, the filters will intercept the request. Now what this filter does, 
although in the applications filter chain there is a single filter but it internally configures something called security filter chain which has a series of filters specific to spring security so this single filter is internally referring to another chain of filters which is security filter chain all these security filters form a chain which is called security filter chain now this security filter chain is very critical for a spring security based application because this forms the core part of the spring security and when we cover the hands on videos we will see how we configure this spring security filter chain from a client it will be intercepted by spring filter first which is this one and then the request will be delegated to security filter chain which will trigger a series of security filters so all these filters will get a chance okay to intercept the request that means they will get a chance to execute their logic now these security filters are part of frameworks authentication and authorization mechanisms so for example one filter could be responsible for let's say http basic authentication which uses simple username and password while other filter could be responsible for oauth or jwt and so on so as the request goes through each filter in the security filter chain each security filter will handle a specific security aspect so to summarize the request comes it will be handled by spring filter which will be handled by the security filter chain which will trigger a series of security filter which will basically trigger the authentication and authorization mechanism of spring security so far we have not discussed how it authenticates the client or the user so let's move on now the next stop in the chain next stop in the architecture is this particular box okay and we have authentication manager so once the request passes through these security filters it will be handled by the authentication manager authentication manager decides if the user or the client is authenticated or not but the thing is this authentication manager does not do the authentication itself so again you can see the separation of concerns in the spring security architecture there are many components and each component is responsible for a particular job so authentication manager decides if the client is authenticated or not but it does not perform the actual authentication for that it delegates the responsibility to something called provider manager now in the spring framework provider manager inherits from the authentication manager and it internally the provider manager internally has a list of authentication providers now what are these authentication providers these authentication providers are responsible for specific type of authentication mechanisms as i said authentication manager does not do the authentication itself it delegates the responsibility to provider manager and provider manager has a list of authentication providers and each authentication provider knows how to authenticate based on a particular authentication mechanism so for example if you are using oauth 2.0 then there will be an authentication provider which knows how to authenticate using oauth 2.0 and similarly let's say if you are using http basic which simply uses username and password then there will be an authentication provider in the list that knows how to perform the http basic authentication so as you can see the request will be delegated to authentication manager which will delegate the request to provider manager and provider manager will delegate the request to a specific authentication provider that can perform that specific type of authentication so all these functionalities are properly segregated in the architecture so once the request is handled by a specific authentication provider that knows how to authenticate a particular type of authentication then if the client or the user is authenticated successfully then the information of that authenticated client is stored in something called security context holder all right this is an object handled by the spring security framework now this security context holder has another object which is security context and this security context has another object which is known as authentication this authentication represents the currently authenticated user so in this authentication object we will have informations like principal which represents the user authorities which represent the roles or permissions assigned to this particular user and the credentials all right so this is a single object authentication which represents the authenticated user 
and with the help of this authentication object we can get the data like principal username or the roles or permissions assigned to the user and credentials so there is this one box that we haven't talked about what is this user detail service and password encoder the thing is as i said there are different authentication providers and each authentication provider knows how to perform the authentication of a specific type and this box or these components are mainly used with let's say http basic where we use the username and password all right so let's cover these two components as well the first one is password encoder what it does it basically encodes the password so for example you expose an endpoint to register the user that means the user will hit that endpoint and you will store the user information let's say in the database and that user information will have fields like username and password so instead of storing the passwords in the plain text manner in the database we can configure a password encoder and with the help of this password encoder we can encrypt the password we can encode the password and we will store the hashed password in the database and then in the authentication flow when the user is trying to authenticate by entering the username and password password encoder will match the entered password with the hashed password which is there in the database all right so that is the job of password encoder there are different password encoders provided by the spring security framework which we can configure in the application pass this password encoder is simply an interface and similarly there is this interface user detail service so what happens uh, there are different authentication providers but how does spring security know that how to load a particular user what i mean by that is how where do we store the user information in an application we can decide to store the user information let's say in the database it could be a mysql database or a nosql database or maybe a cloud database or we can store the information in another service maybe there is another service which is responsible for managing the users all right or we can even use third party applications like okta or anything or any other user directory all right dictionary that holds the user information so the point is in the authentication flow when spring security is trying to authenticate the user how does it find the corresponding user it doesn't know whether it has to read the user from the database or from a third party service or from any other third party tool so this contract user detail service defines how to read a particular user so for example we have a class in the application that will implement this particular interface and this particular interface has a method for example load by username so when we implement this interface we will have to provide the implementation of that method and that's how spring security knows how to read the user information so what spring security will do it will simply find that okay there is one implementation of this user detail service in the application and it will simply call this method it doesn't care about the implementation as long as we are following the interface contract it knows that it has to call this particular method and it knows that in the return i will have the user information and with the help of this user information spring security can authenticate the user or the client all right so that is the role of user detail service and password encoder so now we have covered all the components all the major components of the spring security framework let me clear the screen okay and if we summarize the flow the request first passes through the filters okay then it is intercepted by springs filter and then the request is delegated to the spring security filter chain all right and from here the request will be sent to authentication manager which delegates the responsibility of authentication to authentication providers and depending on the authentication mechanism they may or may not use user detail service or password encoder but if the client is authenticated successfully the authentication detail is stored in the security context holder inside security context object and inside authentication object okay so that might sound complicated because there are a lot of things that we covered in this video but hopefully this explanation has made some things clear how the framework's component work together and how they secure the application now that we have covered the architecture and the flow itself in the future videos we will dive into each of these components with code examples and hands on so that's all for now on the spring security if you found this video helpful make sure to like subscribe and i will see you in the next one thanks for watching